this is David. In this video, I'm going to talk about Azure Open AI service and show you how to create one in the Azure portal and how to use one. Open AI is a tool for, for doing generative artificial intelligence. The generative AI allows you to use the large language models or large image models to generate text or generate images. It can also be used for generating audio, but I'm going to stick with mostly with text here and a little bit of images. To get started, I'll log into the Azure portal and click this big plus create a resource button right here. I'm going to search for open AI, one word. Here it is, Azure Open AI, and then I'll just click create Azure Open AI. And it'll ask me a few questions. What in what resource group do I want to put this? I'll, I'll give it, I'll call it um, about uh, GCAST. OAI SBC, Open AI Service, RG for resource group. OK, and I'll put this in the East US, but I can put it wherever I want. East US happens to be pretty close to where I live, so I'll do that. And I'm going to name it. I'm going to give it a name. It just has to be unique. GCAST OAI Service uh, Service is unique. And the pricing tier, I've only got one option right now, the standard S0 pricing tier. Um, there's some information about pricing details here and some links to learn more, but I'm going to just click next right here to show these other tabs. I can restrict what next works can access this. I can add some tags. Tags really are just for reporting purposes that so you want to sort or filter different resources or group together resources on your reports. You can do that. I won't do any of those things. I'll just take the false. And this tab here just checks to make sure that everything is complete and consistent and that I won't get any errors when I click this create button. So I clicked it. It starts to deploy this uh, and it takes about a minute. So I'm going to pause the video while it's deployed. We're back. It took about 30 seconds to deploy this. And if I click on go to resource right here, now I see my Azure OpenAI services right here. Now, one thing I could do is use this Azure OpenAI Studio. This takes me outside of the Azure portal and into a different user interface. And from here, I can use tools to deploy models and to um, uh, test those deployments. You notice on the left here, I've got a bunch of options here. One of them is models. And if I click on this, it will give me a list of available models from OpenAI service. Here they are. You can see that they're different versions. So, for example, Chat or GPT 3.5 Turbo. There are a bunch of different versions of it. The dates they will release. You can also see whether or not they've succeeded in deploying those models and whether or not they're deployable. It depends upon your region. There may be some that you just don't have an option to to select. So, I'll just grab this one right here, GPT 3.5, and go up to the top and click Deploy to deploy this model. It does give me some more options here. The model that I've selected is here. The model version, I just want the up-to-date one, but I could select a different one here. And I'll give it a name. I'll call them GPT-35 Turbo. That's fine. I don't need to change the advanced options here for content filter or deployment, but I might change this tokens per minute. I get about, I think, 4,000 with this free version here, but I'm going to bring it up to the tokens per minute. I'll bump that one way up because for these demos, I might uh, as a short video, I want to make sure I don't run out. In fact, I'll bump it all the way to the top here. Click on create right here, and it deployed it very quickly. And I can test this right here by clicking on this chat link. And in here, you see we have an interface that looks like a chat bot right here. And over on the right, it tells me which deployment I'm using. I only have one, so that's the only one listed here, but I can switch between them. And then over here, this is interesting, the number of past messages to include. By default, you'll see 10 of them at a time, and uh, I could bump that up if I wanted to, but I won't. I'll leave it at 10. And then it keeps track of, I only get 4,000 tokens with this, uh, so I'll, um, I, I, I want to keep track of that so I don't exceed that. And here I could put something like uh, I am creating a presentation on Azure Open AI uh, Create and Outline for 
10 slides right here. So because it's using this large language model, it understood that question and it looked in its uh, knowledge base, essentially all the stuff from the internet, the GPT-3.5 only goes up to 2021. So this is good stuff that it can query, but if I want to know, you know, who's in the NCAA basketball tournament that's just started last week, then it probably wouldn't know that because it's too recent. Some of the more uh, recent models might have that information. All right, so here we go. Here, here's 10, you know, slide one, slide two, slide three, slide four, et cetera. Um, really interesting stuff. I, I was explicit about how many slides I wanted, so it told me that. And how about, what do I want to say? Uh, slide three is key features, say, expand slide three by writing four paragraphs on the top. What's interesting is I didn't tell it anything about slide three. It understood slide three is about key features, and it wrote some paragraphs on key features of OpenAI. And so it's understanding some context on this. And if I say shorten this to one paragraph, it understands what this means. This means the the output that they just gave me right before this. So it is understanding some context in here, and it's conversational, just as if you were having, or almost as if you were having a conversation with a human. It is limited. It doesn't, uh, it isn't exactly a human. After building these things, you may want to double check them and make sure the answers are reasonable before you deploy it to the public. But this gives you a good way to test this and to see the power of the open AI service when you're building a chatbot. The next thing I want to show you is this DAL E playground. If I click over here, it's going to deploy a DAL E3 model. I actually have the option of a DAL E2 as well. Um, and you may have to wait about five minutes because it takes some time to actually deploy this model. And the DAL E3 model is for image generation rather than for text generation, is that GPT 3.5 Turbo was. And once I have this, then I can add something in here in the prompt that I could say something like, a polar bear, just describe an image. Bear eating ice cream, wearing a top hat, just whatever I want to do. And it'll generate, and this tends to take a little bit longer to generate an image. It's, it's got a model that contains lots of other images. It knows what a polar bear looks like. It knows what a top hat looks like. It knows what ice cream looks like. And there we go. It generated that. If I wanted to, if I didn't like that one, I could regenerate with the same prompt, or I can say something like in the style of Van Gogh and generate that. And it'll generate another image of a polar bear eating ice cream in a top hat. But in this case, it should look like a Vincent Van Gogh painting. And there, that's what it did right here. So in this video, I showed you how to create an Azure open AI service, how to deploy a model, how to use that model to test a chat application, and to use a DALI 3 model to test an image generation application. This is David. Thank you for watching. Yeah.